Bucko. Oh, he's spilling. <laughs> wet tits. <laughs> it's a wet t-shirt contest. I'm going to uh, win. Yeah, me and my brother earlier were talking about in a pinch candy. What? I got him um, a tin shaped like a Nintendo 64 controller or a Super Nintendo controller. And inside, my niece goes, oh, what? what's in there? And he goes, oh, some candy. You know, it's like berry-flavored hard candy or whatever. And he's like, but this is that in a pinch candy, right? Where you're sitting there one night, you're all high, and you're thinking, man, I wish I had some candy. And you go, ah, I got that. I said, yeah, man, I once had a, one of those nights with Andy's Mints. I like Andy's Mints. Yeah. It's probably not designed to eat 12 or 13 in a night. Oh, fuck. I ate a whole box one time. I was being modest. I ate the whole box. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm eating mints tonight. <laughs> That's in a pinch candy. It's just, for some reason, you got this candy laying around. You don't eat it. But in a pinch. Oh, I'm Jason. I'm Jules. And we, we do doing filmographies. filmographies. Final Robert Longstreet. We did it. Monster in a wheelchair. Burn the hat. What? You ever see that one? Mm-mm. What is it? Monster in a wheelchair. If we run up this hill, I'll bet we'll be safe from the monster in a wheelchair. Probably inappropriate, huh? No. No. Or would it be? Because he can't get up the hill because he's in a wheelchair. That's his challenge. <laughs> Shit. Well, I'm Jason. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jules. No, I, I think uh, that's funny. So we're doing a, f- a little film that I, I like to call. Lo and Behold? Yes. Check out this movie. It's called? Lo and Behold. Ah! However, it's spelled L-O-W and Behold. But the actual phrase is L-O and Behold. Yeah. So I don't know if that's, does that mean anything? Or yeah. do you think they just didn't know that? I don't know. Or because they're in the lower ward. Oh, probably. And they're beholding. I, I don't know. But 763 634 1897. So this, this fucking movie over here, hour and 36 minutes, not rated, came out in 2007. Also, like, never heard of this thing. I think it made $21,000 in its theatrical run. I don't think this exists like anywhere for anybody i don't think this is a movie people saw or reviewed oddly enough no you would think because it seemed quite timely wildly timely like a real peak at an area you don't see anything no like they were like let's just go down there and film this you know uh because i mean shit looked wrecked for quite a while after the katrina hurricane but man this felt like only a few months after i mean they're still tearing shit down Mm mm-hmm they're still finding, and there's one point where they're walking into somebody's yard, and there's still just trash and water just milling around in the middle of the street, you know? I like this movie. Yeah. This is the one that I said, two-thirds of it I am very into. I do not find it riveting, uh-huh. but I love it. This is an independent-ass, independent movie. It reminded me of, I think it's called Spring Forward with Liev Schreiber and Squill Like a Pig. I can't remember his name right. Ned Beatty. Hmm. And they're just like two parks and rec guys, and it's the two of them like in the parks working and just talking for the whole movie. I'm sorry, Mr. Murphy. I didn't mean to it's sorry. okay, Paul. You don't owe me anything. Okay, nothing. You and me, we're the same. That's it. Be who you are, say what you want. I can handle that, okay? Okay. Fine. And it's great. I may have seen that. I think Liev Schreiber's character has allergies. <laughs> That's it, It's fantastic. Huh. It reminds me of this a lot. The, yeah, man. This this kind of reminded me of The Detectorists a little bit. I don't know why we do it. No, I do. Time travel. Metal detecting is the closest you'll get to time travel. You know, where the thing is bringing them together. But they're just living, trying to figure out how to live a life. You know, uh, did you want to do the synopses? All right, Jules, yep. should we do a synopsis? Oh, that'd be a great idea. I'm glad you thought of that. Thank you so much. Lo and behold, Turner Stahl, Barlow Jacobs, moves to post-Katrina New Orleans to work as a claims adjuster for his body uncle, E.D. Stully Stahl, Robert Longstreet, Andy Rouse, played Nixon. This concludes our first run of Longstreet movies. And I'm sorry, I pronounced it wrong. I meant Nolens. Nolens. It opens up with an interview of a guy talking some nonsense about an ice house or whatever. Does it work on my I was 12 years old when Bessie. Can't see his grandkids. Give me a break. And and Barlow rolls into town. Uh, he goes up to uh, Longo's house, who welcomes him in with a shot of his derriere. He's mooning him. You've just been attacked by Vanilla Gorilla, my friend. Thank you for that. The Vanilla Gorilla. I just remembered that my son did the old butthole spread for me oh, last night God. in bed. And I was like, you do not do that. No. He's like, <laughs> why not? It's like, man, come on. Yeah. He, he was like laying in the bed. Oh, He's God. supposed to be going to sleep. And I turn around after adjusting the curtain and his 
legs are up over his head and he's peeling it. Yeah, get the fuck out of here with that. No, dude. God damn, nobody wants to see your butt. I've seen your butthole enough in my life. So. I've never seen my butthole. Really? I don't need to see anybody else. You don't squat over the, a mirror and kind of fiddle with it a little? I do, but I make other people look at it <laughs> and describe why, it. That's why the mirror is there for other people to look at, mm-hmm. but they're not involved in the fiddling. No, no, You're God, still, no. still... Okay. <laughs> so, you know, Robert Longstreet's a bit of a, a wiseacre. Eh. And he hugs him. I feel like he's just kind of a dickhead. And it kind of looks like he's grinding on him a little bit. Did you catch no, that? I didn't. And he goes, oh, sorry, you're not did, a hugger. Did you notice he's got like a wet circle on the back of his pants in the beginning after he pulls him back up? No, but they're all wet in this movie because yeah. they're just sweating. Profusely. Oh, I suppose. I was thinking it's because everything's like wet from the flooding, but yes. No, no, no. Everything's dry from the flooding No. They're hot as shit, and nobody's. He doesn't have electricity. He has a generator, and he gives them a shirt. And there's a really weird moment. He gives uh, Barlow a shirt, Stull, I guess is Stull, and it's really big polo, and he puts it on. And Robert Longstreet's talking, and then he catches a glimpse of him, and he stops. He goes, "Whoa, Captain America!" And I was like, "Why is it, what? It's just a navy polo, and I don't understand what that means." You know, it's a weird line. But hey, it's memorable, apparently. Uh, Not for me. No, no, God, no. I'm just staring at you blankly. Mm-hmm. I know you're going you know, to call into question the uh, veracity of my claims. Yeah, you're a liar. He's going to sue me. You're a liar, you got a mustache, and you lie. <laughs> I do. I lie around all the time. But uh, they're claims adjusters. Apparently, they're contractors hired by insurance companies to go and assess the damage to claimants homes now i i didn't look into this but i seem to think that a lot of people were shit out of luck because they weren't in an area of the city that historically had flooded so they didn't have flood insurance oh really so then when everything gets i mean it's like eight feet of water you you see the water lines on these houses and shit and the insurance companies are like you know having flood insurance i mean it's way more than eight in some spots oh god yeah you know 25 30 thousand right (laughs) <laughs> These planes are barely able to yeah, you're in fly the over it. Ozone layer. <laughs> so, so I think I think a lot of people did get screwed on that. And probably also the act of God clause, which some insurance has in it. So their job is to go around and then look at people's fucked up shit. There's a weird party with the claim adjuster God. Uh, that guy sucks. I used to lay in bed at night and pray to God that he would bring a natural disaster on this country. A disaster so large as to bring massive property damage. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, he, but he's good at this part. And I liked it because everybody in the room seemed like a realistic collection of average people. Yeah, just like... That happened to work together. Yeah, like, like the, three women. Like yeah. the old guy with the beard who uh-huh. looks like you button him up in some clothes and he looks nice, but he's secretly got a bunch of shitty tattoos. The one guy from that draft show... Who was the rich guy? Remember that draft show? What the fuck is that draft? Oh, the Fantasy league? football. The league. You know, the guy who's like wealthy? Kind of funny looking. Paul Shear. Yeah. You know, Steve Ranazazi lied about being in 9-11 and being in the buildings. Really? Yeah, he straight up lied about it for years and then he got busted. And they canceled him? Uh, I think it was just a real embarrassing, horrible situation for him. But he was for a while known as the, the funny comedian who survived 9-11. Crazy. Liar. I watched, I watched a documentary about that lady. The lady that lied? Yeah. Boy, that was crazy. People people like to lie. Easy to do it, apparently. I mean, everybody wants to believe that shit. I don't really have kids. It's a lie. Mm-hmm. I rented those boys you saw. Yeah, we're not even supposed, supposed to be here. You just Robert downy your way in. Am I laid in the bed? Crib. Yeah. Yep. So, you know, we're just rolling around with Barlow. He ends up running into Nixon, who... Looking for his dog, Crunchy. Crunchy. Hey, what's up, man? You lost? You sure you got the right map here? What are you doing? Hey, you know what? I do know where this street is. It's close to here. You know what? I, I, I'm sorry. Like, I don't need your, your help, man. Really? Yeah. Let me tell you, you, you know where you're park right now? You change your mind. Quick. Well, well, I was just leaving, so. Hey, great. Now, I'm going over here over to the park, you know? What? No, yeah. See, I, I was looking for my dog, right? And I think she might be hiding over here at the park. Yeah, man. I got to find my dog. You know, my kids are going to kill me and whatever. And I mean, he... Looks real. Barlow's in his car, mm-hmm. and he fucking rolls up on him. He's like, hey, man, you looking for the address? I he can just, show you where that yeah, is. He's in just his up in his shit immediately. Yeah, and I probably would have done the same thing. To be Fuck yeah, Callie dude. goes, I would have just rolled up the window. He looked homeless and dirty. His wild eyes. Why, man, why, why sure was he cool, shaking? Like did, did that not make his friends? No, look, I, help me. Whoa, whoa, brother. Help me. I help you. Come on. You know? This guy looks like a crackhead you want nothing to do with. So, But later, Barlow is stranded on a roof because his ladder falls. And 
Nixon walks by. Well, he, what he did to Nixon was he's like, all right, I'll give you a ride to the park to look for your dog. And he's like, all right, And he great. goes around the back of the and, car And to Barlow get in. just drives off and Nixon just looks sad. And Barlow's just like, oh my God. <laughs> oh boy. I'm a gonna, person of color tried to get in my car. I'm going to go on to direct a movie with Hitman and Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know. He's not Taron Killam. Glice? What's Glice? Boy, he looks like him, though. So then he comes across him stranded on the roof, and Nixon's like, nah, man, I'm not going to help you. Fuck you. Fuck you. See, there's this guy who once told me it's not good to help strangers. My name's Turner Stowe. Turner Stowe? I've got business cards. What's the matter with you? You scared of something? I just don't like heights. (laughs) All right, man. All right, listen. I'm going to get your ladder for you, right? But you got to give me a ride to the park. And he goes, all right, fuck, I'll take you to the park. Fuck your couch. And he goes, you know what, I'll, I'll buy you some chicken fingers, too. And he does. And he does, and it's crunchy. Wait, the dog? They're eating the dog? <laughs> and he goes, well, how about you give me a ride to the park then tomorrow or whatever? And he goes, ah, I'm busy, man. You know, I got to work. And he goes, all right, well, sometime. He goes, sure, sure, whatever. Where do you live? And he tells him. So then when he comes out the next morning, Nixon's there. Isn't it like a few days later? Maybe. I thought it was the next morning, but Could be. time is irrelevant in this film. So he reluctantly takes him with him. He kind of muscles his way in. I'm not going to let you stay in the car by yourself while I go in and do these claims. Why not? What am I going to do? I don't know. Hotwire it and steal it? You think I know how to hotwire a car? If I go out a hotwire car, why would I be sitting here asking you for a ride? But they go around doing their thing, the claims adjusting, and then he takes them to the park and uh, whatever. Nixon is wildly likable yes like you should his crackhead demeanor Mm -hmm. sends up like a red flag that's not who he is though at all like he's he's personable he's helpful Mm -hmm. he's just generally nice he's great well and he says he works at the buckle factory bucket i thought he said buckle we make buckets because his shirt says buckets but i'm i thought 100 percent both him and Barlow said buckles. I heard bucket. Well, whatever. That makes more sense because that's what his shirt says. Somebody's got to make buckets. Right? says he's got a family. He works third shift and he's looking for his dog. I immediately knew that wasn't going to be the case. No, I mean, okay, here's the thing. I was greatly suspicious he did not work at night because he seems to be out all day during the day. Mm-hmm. You would never be getting That's what any Callie sleep. said. Yeah. He's always wearing the same outfit. Yes. He's always got that kid's backpack on. Right. And and also it's post Katrina. Something's kinda off about this guy. And Barlow is like a fucking wooden plank. So there's gotta be some sort of an emotional climax. It's I gotta mean, involve this guy. I just figured his family was dead. Do you like do you like Barlow? I don't. I'm tired of this character. I'm like 50% on board with what he's doing. Okay. 50% of him, I'm like, yeah, I mean, you're just kind of this awkward guy. Sure. But also the other 50%, I'm like, I think you're not a good actor mm-hmm. most of the time. You're just so blank. It's it's a fine line to walk, man. You know, to be, he lightens up slightly as the movie goes on. But at the climax, he's just got a look of horror on his face. Because he can't process or react to what's happening, and it just yeah, it feels cheap almost. Like the the final third. Well, no, the that sort of character, especially in this movie where it doesn't even seem to be necessary. He could just be a slacker guy. When it when it did you say put Pat Healy in this or you didn't? No, but I you I should I yeah Switch I could see out. that. Yep. Yeah, Barlow was writing on this too. Yeah, he co-wrote it with that guy whose name i did look up i'm following them both on instagram now. okay Uh, and a lot of this feels improvised dude barlow had a real weird run dude where he was in like shotgun stories Mm. he was in this he was in that great world of sound Mm -hmm. i think he was in the master for like a five-year period he was uh, weirdly in a bunch of good indies Mm. cool man his photo looks like he's from 1800 it's imdb photo so he's kind of rolling with nixon a little bit he's got a fear of heights uh, barlow does and so eventually nixon starts measuring the roofs for him and uh, robert longstreet comes down on him pretty hard a little bit earlier in the movie because his claims had errors in them i I mean you, you did the training right you did do the training the home office called in and they said that your reports had a lot of mistakes in them your insureds have been calling up complaining you have to redo all those reports? Well, yeah. They're going to send them back, and you're going to have to tweak them a little bit. He had taken the three-day course, mm-hmm. and Robert Longstreet's like, everybody gets three days. You know, I'm I'm still on board with Robert Longstreet's character at this point. 
he's, he's like, I don't mean to be hard on you, man, but... He's a little bit of a dick, but, I mean, they're both there to make money, right? Yeah. He brought him down from wherever for... This money-making opportunity for this destroyed city. Even though it doesn't seem like he's from there. No, he seems like he just went down there. Yeah. I mean, none of them seem like they're from there, except for the people that they interview who are locals. Really, the secret sauce to this movie is the location mm -hmm. and the camera work. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just absorbing it like a documentary all the just driving around looking at the buildings yeah going to these different houses and looking at the damage it's amazing yeah because it was either incredibly cheap post katrina to get permits or they they're just so the city is so crippled still that you can just film yeah nobody gives a fuck because like what was that um bad lieutenant port of call, call new orleans yeah. yeah that was right maybe not right after but shortly thereafter but took place partially during it, was his backstory. Isn't there like a flooding moment in that movie? In the very beginning, it's flooding, and he jumps down to save a criminal in jail. Yeah. And that's where he busts up his hip. Is that movie awesome? Uh, it's a cage showcase. Isn't that a Herzog movie? Yeah. Why is it called that? Because they were like, we need to, I think they were like, we need to do something with this bad lieutenant. But why? What? Have you seen the original Abel Ferrara? I haven't bad seen lieutenant? the entire movie, but I mean, like the parking lot shakedown scene with sure. the girl. I mean, you know, it's it's not like necessarily something you would even want to remake. No, but that it, it's it's really good. Let, yeah, absolutely. It's really good. Like the ending. There's he's. Oh, I really like Bad Lieutenant. They tried to make a video game based on Taxi Driver after the end of the movie is when it took place. It was like a GTA style. They did, they did the same thing with Scarface and Godfather, which actually got out the door. But And they, they take place after the events of the movie? Yeah, and you're Travis Bickle, running around in an open world, 1970s New York. Near the rain, cleaning the streets? I guess, yeah. It sounded very misguided. But Do, Did you see the ending of Bad Lieutenant? No. Do you want me to ruin it? Sure. Oh, it's great. So he's like just evil and awful the entire time, right? And there's a nice shot from like across the street where he pulls up in his car and then somebody else drives by and just shoots him and drives off and he's just dead in that car. Like mm. it's all the same shot. It's great. It's Harvey Keitel? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He just gets smoked at the end. It's fucking fantastic. It's oh, bad. it's a wonderful ending. Yeah. It, but so, yeah, the because the, the, throughout the film they do interviews with people who were there. Man, that one guy, you can't even understand him. He, bear. In the very beginning? No, like in the middle, like at a barbecue. Oh, yeah. I didn't I, know what the hell was going on I there. could not understand that guy at all, man. Like, he's no. dark eating a gator jerky, man. That was a weird scene because it felt like it was a, the movie, it's like the movie and then there's the interviews. The movie takes up most of the runtime, but the interviews, they, they're they there and they work, but they feel very separate. About a half hour later. I look at the door, my mama's car's floating away. We was on our way back to the door to get out the house, get in the boat. The door blew open, the pressure from the water. They seem unnecessary, but yeah. Absolutely. That scene that you're describing felt like they were marrying the two. Because he's where there was at the, the barbecue. Actor, right, and they're doing whatever Nixon's foot race. good. Nixon's good in that scene. Yeah. Barlow's just there. Yeah, he's talking about pinballs and their guy's cooking up alligator or something. I don't know. but So they develop a friendship. L later on, we see Robert Longstreet and, and Barlow eating pizza and having beer. And Robert Longstreet tells a story that's uh, insensitive racially. Oh, yeah. Is this about the, the, the Mexican guy? Uh, and he goes, I mean, I don't want to do it, but... Will you please listen to my story? I'm listening. All right. This I.I. I. walks in, right? Wait, I... Illegal immigrant. And this guy is, like, from Bolivia or South America or some such shit. And he thinks he can get one over on ODD by talking in his native tongue, right? And so I said him straight. I look him right in the eye. I'm like, hey, Pepe, just like you don't want to get paid in pesos, I don't want to be talked to in Spanish. <laughs> and he's holding for applause yeah and barlow just stares at him with the slice of pizza drooping yeah and he leaves the room and he hammer fists the the door on his way out he's super pissed trying to lighten the mood you know i think he's he's lonely and he thought this would go better yeah we don't understand anything about barlow's past he bought a car from a girl who dumped him um something's up with his dad long street does not get along with his dad it's unclear 
who he's related to, the mother or the father. I think the dad. I thought he was Longstreet was the fuck up little brother of the dad. Does it? Do they mention that? Because he goes, no. oh, "My mom let me her digital camera." How's your dad? Well, he's my dad. You know, but it, I, I, he doesn't ever say like, "How's my sister?" "How's my brother?" I don't know. I I couldn't tell who he was related to. It's his uncle. I don't know if we mentioned that, but so him and Nixon are becoming friends. They spend so much time together. They do, and they're helping each other. Robert Longstreet just happens to drive by. In his pickup, he sees them walking around. In an alley, right, and he goes, what the hell is going on? I'm doing claims. I thought you were on the other side of town doing claims. How you doing? I'm I'm Nixon. You know this guy? Barlow's trying to, like, be even keeled like he does, and and Robert Longstreet's like, this guy is not a claim adjuster. I am, too. Oh, really? Yeah, really? really? Got one of these? What the hell is that? This is a claim adjuster's Uncle license. Stelly, put you got the claim one? adjuster license think so. away. This is totally against regulations. And he goes, I, actually, it's not. And he goes, well, it should be. He just can't understand what's happening. Yeah. He, I, he like, picks up on the, not crackheady, not nefariousness, but, like, maybe the bullshitty vibe of Nixon. He's the, Nixon's the kind of guy that Robert Longstreet is wise to. Yeah, because he's unquote. sick of people flim-flamming, fucking blathering at him. Yeah. It's all business. Then, right. He's not from there. He doesn't want anything, anything to do with them other than his job. Earlier, Nixon says Crunchy's been missing for a month. Yes. And then when Robert Longstreet asks him, he's like, oh, a couple months. Late, slightly later, because yeah. eventually, before they go look for Crunchy, Barlow has to run into the house real quick to grab some papers. And Robert Longstreet's there. What are you doing? Well, I'm going to go sign. I got to get some signatures real quick. And he goes, well, I'll come along. All right, we got some beers. Come back and hang out. Fuck, man. I'm going to come with you, you know? I'm hanging out in my t-shirt looking like a regular guy. We're going to go get some drinks, and then we'll bring some beers back, and we'll just hang. And Barlow's like, oh, no. I'll, you know, I'll, ah, you don't want to. You trying to make me punch you in the face? How come you don't hang out with me anymore? Like, what's that What's that about? You know, if Longstreet wouldn't be a dick, he could be part of this. It could be a trio. If nothing else, be curious about what's happening here. Spend some time in the situation and weigh in to make sure that, if nothing else, this guy isn't, like, taking advantage of your nephew or trouble or something. And so, But Nixon pops in, like, hey, man, what's taking so long? And Robert Longstreet's like, Nixon, oh, Nixon, Nixon, just wait in the car. Hi. Me. Still hey. looking for your lost dog? Yeah, man, we've been at all day long. Oh, didn't realize the hunt was still on. Thought we were signing papers, stuff like that. Well, well, well. Whoop de doo! What's going on here? You know, you and your fucking idiot friend. We're gonna, gonna go look for Crunchy. Oh, is that right? Hey, how long has that dog been gone? Oh, uh, you know, uh, a couple months. Ago. Oh, a couple months. Wow. Yeah, but you know, we've been um, making a good. Oh, making some headway, are you? Yeah. Um. You know what? Did it ever occur to you that maybe that dog is fucking dead? Oh man, I, I gotta go. I'm gonna get out of here. Yeah, you fucko. And Barlow drops him off, and he's just distant. I'll see you in the morning and nothing. and That's it, man. He gone. He gone, girl. Yeah, and because Robert Longstreet's like, man, we don't even fucking hang anymore, Barlow. It's like, did you ever? I mean, I think a little bit. I think he just was there because he had nowhere else to be. This is their house slash office slash party room. You know? They share a phone and the answer machine. Yeah, so. Never give them your cell phone number. They will call you. All the fucking time. But now Nixon's gone and Barlow's just. Doing his thing. and I miss my friend. Asking for directions at one point. And uh, they have another party at the Chateau Stoll. Robert Longstreet's just hammered. There aren't that many people there. He busts out the smoke machine, but that doesn't seem to work or be a good idea. There's some pretty decent looking ladies there. And he's just making an ass of himself. And he goes, I'm sorry. I couldn't get the strobe light machine going. And, you know, and they're like, eh, it's all right, man. You know, and he goes, I want to go home, but I am home. I'm going to take a, I'm going to take a walk. Okay, you want me to come? Do you want to come with me? No, no, no. You stay here with this brunette over here that you're maybe macking on or. I he, don't know. He seems pretty fucking dickless. I and he know. leaves. And I'm thinking, man, is he going to go kill himself? Dinglingless. Is he, you know, something bad's going to happen? We don't ever see him again. What? Is that true? Yeah. I don't think anything happened to him. No, I just would have been nice to... So, Barlow eventually <laughs> finds Nixon foot racing again, because he's a foot race men's health enthusiast. Mm-hmm. Barlow shit his pants almost earlier. Remember that? Oh, yeah. And he shows how he locks the turds in. He's yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like doing a weird leg stretch. <laughs> That's pretty good. But then he poops. He doesn't wipe. 
and it's like a million degrees out. Where does he poop? Just he goes. I got to get coverage, but he's pooping in next to a hydrant on the outskirts of like shrubbery. But not only that, so you just turded. Maybe, maybe didn't he's wipe. Got good poops though. Well, but it's like ninety degrees out, man. Now you got sweat ass with a unwiped, freshly pooped. I just I have like anus, little, whatever that looks like. A little bit of diarrhea dripping out twenty four seven. I got a little bit of diarrhea dripping in. Oh shit! Where's it? Oh man, is it the the anti god? You know, from Prince of Darkness. Now that we're on the subject, I've been having so many more poops filled with blood and oh. pieces of glass. Oh god! Like far more than normal. Okay, here's the thing. Yeah, you're eating glass at night. <laughs> you're sleepwalking. It's in a pinch. Chompy chompy. Eat that candy. Oh, yeah. It's a colored light bulb. I oh, mean, it's man. You cherry, right? up. Yep. I don't know. So, you know, he poops in and whatever. So there, he finds Nixon foot racing, and uh, he goes, yo, man, where you been at? You know, and he goes, you never, did, I'm leaving. I'm done. My job's done. Oh, you never did a claim on my house. Uh, all right, well, let's go do it. And so they roll up, and uh, predictably, the house is in shambles. But the weird thing is, it's unclear what happened to his family. Well, what do you mean? He left because he didn't think the storm was going to hit the there. So he left to, I don't know, do something. And he just keeps going, where's my family? Do you think that I would leave my family if I knew it was going to happen? Where's my family, Turner? Where's my family? Where's my family? Where did they go, Turner? Where did they go? I mean, the, the flood took them away. They're dead. Everybody's Possibly. Dead. What, you think they might have gone somewhere and they're fine? Well, no. They're in some, like, FEMA trailers? For some time there, people were shipped. The one guy interviewing, he he ended up in Texas. Sure. So, without knowing the timeline, it's possible that they were displaced and are just unable to get in touch with him because their house was destroyed. He doesn't have a cell phone. He's living on the streets or some shit. Maybe they came back for him and he's not there. I think he lives in the house. Or You don't think he lives there? No. Why? It's uninhabitable. I mean, lots of those places are uninhabitable. You think he slept on that mattress they showed? I don't know. I think he's in there somewhere. Or they were never found. What do you mean by never found? Like the flood hit and... Dragged him out to sea? I don't know. They were bloated down the street 10 blocks and they couldn't identify them. Yeah, they're definitely dead. I mean, they're not there. Two girls, wife, and a dog. Mm -hmm. It even said dogs zero on the side of the house. Somebody spray paint it, you know, and they spray paint the what what's inside the house. Yeah. They go, dog zero. I'm like, Jesus, it's crunchy we're talking about here. He ain't <laughs> zero. And he breaks down. Barlow cradles him, and the movie ends. Yeah. And I enjoyed it. I did not care for the last third so much. Where the they, revelations and everything? Like the the build up to the revelation where it felt like it was more natural and it's these two exploring and doing things together and like that felt good. Mm-hmm. But then they were like, well, we better cram some story in here at the end. And I was like, eh. I would have been fine if he would have just left. Barlow? Yeah. Yeah. We don't see Nixon again. That That's, that's a more realistic take on it. These things that you know this flow through your life for no rhyme or reason they're just there and they happen and you're a part of it and then it's gone you know yeah i wish they would have maybe just showed robert longstreet sleeping it off he looks in his the crack through the door sees him walks down the street sees the lost dog sign and that's it i did like this movie quite a bit though mm-hmm. i like the music yeah i, I don't remember it but just i know it wasn't bad instrumental and atmospheric sure just carried it Seeing all the stuff, all the fucked up shit. Yeah. Houses in another house's yard. I don't think that house was supposed to be there. You know? Some of the local interviews are insightful, impactful, but it's unclear. I, I suppose it's meant to be just through conversation during the claims adjustment, but it, we don't ever really hear them interacting with the people to know if it's actually even Barlow or if they're just interviewing people, the director or whatever. So that kind of felt a little disjointed and... It just reminded me of Spike Lee's uh, Katrina documentary. When the Levies Broke. Which is insane. I haven't seen it. In, can you, do you remember when Katrina hit? 2006? That's not what I meant. I meant, do you remember like living yeah. through? Here's the thing. George W. Bush doesn't like black people. I was unaware of it for pretty much the whole run that it happened. Is that right? Like I was like, oh, there's some flooding. Oh my God. I did catch any of it man wow and then afterwards like oh i was following that closely it just felt like 
what is going on, man? Every day, the breaking news, the fucking live footage, and Sean Penn in a fucking boat, and, yeah. uh, you know, just like the dead woman in the wheelchair that they just put a blanket on out in the on- entrance ramp to the fucking, you know, football stadium and shit. Yeah, I missed, like, I the think. The mayor. They're raping babies in here. I'm pretty sure if you raped a baby mm-hmm. that uh, people would murder you. I'm pretty sure. The, w- yeah. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure in like every situation, unless it's the cannibalistic future mm-hmm. of the road, that if you rape a baby, people will murder you. Because you know, they say that most sexual assault, the victim is actually me, mostly nonverbal. Oh, they're yeah. always like, "Why didn't you scream for help?" Because they're horrified. People and don't frozen. Yeah, yeah, you're just locked up. Like, what is happening? Is this you know? So yeah, I mean that shit definitely happens without being noticed. But I I, I don't I don't know if it was as rampant as. But I mean there were people shooting at people just for walking by their house. Yeah, people I were mean, scared, man. Race shit stirred up, and yeah. and then private industry came in and bought up everything and Did privatized they? the schools and. Yeah, I think I missed like the first three or four days of Katrina. It was a shock doctrine. It was a clear example of a massive effect on a large population of folk that then allowed people to come in and do things that otherwise would not be palatable. I think, yeah, there, there's always those people waiting in the wings to fucking get their, their moves out mm-hmm. there. But yeah, they couldn't even get like water to that football stadium. It's pretty wild. To that- give to people. Are you shocked at how like useless the government is in these big situations? Absolutely. I still remember there's footage of George Bush walking down a street. Maybe it was Dick Cheney. Probably George Bush, though. Some guy in the background just like, fuck you, George Bush. Yeah. You know, and the news like, did you hear that? They said, fuck you to the president. It sounds legit, man. Now you got presidents saying fuck you. Yeah. You know. Oh, yeah, this movie's great. Yeah. Uh, can we take a moment to do the uh, Eddie Rouse Nixon appreciation. Mm-hmm. I fucking love this guy. In Undertow, like he's easily a nine in his seven minutes in Undertow. Absolutely. I fucking loved him in that movie. Yeah. I love him in this. He's affable. He's interesting. He's weird. He seems, he's got such a strange energy in, he's just a really good character actor. He's the best part of the movie. Easily. Hands down. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, we love Longstreet, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking Eddie Rouse. Mm-hmm. Dude, he's dead. And his IMDb photo was just a photo from a premiere, possibly for this movie. He died seven years after this movie. 14, he looks yeah. like a million years older in that picture. Doesn't he, though? Right. It's weird. It's like, is he 70 secretly? He died at 60. Oh, shit. So he was like 50, in his 50s. Did I he said do to Jenny, a lot? Or... He. I didn't uh, look. Cause I I... He's, he, this is the thing. This is like, I would love to do his IMDb. Like, do his filmography. It's not that exciting, because it's, like, stuff I've seen in, like, big directors, kind of. He's in, like, almost every David Gordon Green project. He's, sure. he's in All the Real Girls. He's in George Washington. He's in sure. Undertow. He's in he's in a handful of things. He's in Observe and Report. He's in, like, oh. some Jody Hill projects. So it's, like, not really any weird curveballs, for the most part. Because David Gordon Green was involved in one of these movies as a producer, I think. Oh, is he? And he also, like, literally, effectively was the director of cinematography because he handled the camera. In this or in a different one? I can't. I want to say it must not, have been. Not the pigs. No, it, so must, have, this or it must have been sound, I think. One of them. I saw it on there and I was like, oh, this guy. Yeah. I'm, I am. I, I think I kind of do want to do this guy at some point. I can't believe he died. He died of liver failure. Hmm. Do you think he was like a huge alcoholic? He, I could definitely, yeah. if you told me that that guy was a huge drinker, I believe it. He looks like he could have been a pretty a decent amount of alcohol consuming kind of guy. He looks like he's living some sort of roughness. Yeah. But I mean, that could just be his look too. Boy, he's great though. He's so fucking good. Don't you just want to watch everything he's in? No, but I yes, don't mind you, watching him. You do. You want to watch everything. <laughs> what do you give this movie? I mean... Mm, I mean, okay, so our our scores reflect how we feel about it, but also how we'd recommend it to other people. So I would give it a seven. Okay. I probably had closer to an eight or even maybe even a nine Mm -hmm. for my experience of watching it like 10 minutes into the movie until like the one hour mark. I was like, wow, Mm -hmm. I really appreciate this movie a lot. So I'm going to give it a seven. I dug it. I'm happy with it. I'm real glad. My first thought was to give it an eight. 
And then when you were thinking about it, I thought, well, maybe a 6.5. But I'll go with a 7.25. Okay. I, I really was not uninterested overall at all in this movie. I almost want to talk to the director and fucking that star and ask them about Eddie Rouse. Yeah. What's up with this guy? What is his deal? What is he like? He's got like, he's got a bunch of kids. Three on the way. What'd you give Robert? I would give Robert like another good seven. Yeah. Like maybe even a 7.5. Like he's good. He's kind of a sad prick. I got the impression he was going to be in it as much as he was in the beginning throughout. Right. And that really doesn't happen. No, he gets distanced a little bit. Quite a bit. Which explains his sadness that his nephew's pulling away from him. Yeah. Although, we, again, we saw them eating lunch and the initial party and Claim's trip on the first day. But we didn't really get to see them. He, I mean, he didn't seem like he was all that nice, though. Like, he's letting yeah. him stay with him. He's giving him the ropes. But he's not, like, extra kind in helping him through the problems he's having. He's annoyed. Yeah, he's Actually. not, I mean, he, he talks and blathers and tells stories, but he's not, like, engaging with him. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's an interesting character. He talks at him, but not with him. Right. Similar to the Great World of Sound guy when he's interviewing Pat Healy, where yeah. he's like, he doesn't give a fuck what you're saying. No. It's the Robert Longstreet show. It's the, right, he's selling you on a bill of goods. He's so good. So you gave him a seven i'll give him a seven yeah i'll roll with that too i've been enjoying long street quite a bit i will give fucking eddie rouse so i say did i say a nine in undertow did i probably. say probably i'm gonna give him a nine okay i will say in this movie i would easily give him an eight yeah he's so goddamn compelling yeah i wish this guy had been huge but also his filmography is weird enough where it seems like the people that were aware of him kept giving him roles you know what They're his like, character this guy's good in this reminds me of bubbles Oh, from The Wire? Mm hmm Man, I just saw him in Two Leslie, and I don't like him in that at all. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I forget his name. Andre Royo. Andre Royo, right. He's giving me a Bubbles vibe. Some of that's the homelessness aspect of it, but there's a depth there that's all suggested at a little bit here and there. Man, but Bubbles is like, I feel like Bubbles was good because of the writing on The Wire. Mm-hmm. I feel like Eddie Rouse is creating his characters all by himself. A oh, absolutely. The, the writing is like whatever. Absolutely. This guy is completely crafting all of this. Absolutely, yeah. And you really just buy their friendship. Because although they're very different, initially there's some bullshit, but eventually that there's just no pretension. Yeah. There's no... There's a weird dependency, but it isn't anything other than literally just understanding each other. Because Stull is not an uh, outgoing guy. Not at all. He's so, super closed up. Yeah, and even together, he gets out of his shell a little bit. But also, Nixon just needs to be around someone. And this guy is good because he's not going to ask you questions. He needs something to do, too. I think Yeah, he's given himself a job, and that's helping this guy. Mm -hmm. Good shit. Real surprise. I give him an eight. I thought this was going to be terrible. I didn't know what to expect. And actually, when I started it at work, I got about nine minutes in, and I said, you know what? I get a feeling Callie might be into this one. Was she? So I sent her a message like, here's what it's slightly about. I'm going to have to watch it like right after work. You know, if you're not interested, I'll just finish it. But she goes, yeah, I'll give that a shot. And she watched it for the most part throughout the entirety of it. So that's it, man. What a nice end to the Longstreet miniseries. Mm -hmm. Thank God we decided to do one more. Actually, that's not true because Great World of Sound was good too. Yeah, yeah. But imagine if we ended at the pigs. Nobody would want to fucking watch any more Longstreet ever. <sighs> Going from ball of wax to pigs, that's a rough, rough bridge there. Yeah. Because he's not in it and then the movie's terrible. No, but I know. You know, but yeah. Next would be Take Shelter. No, I think Pineapple Express might be next. That's right. I knew it was something that I knew and I have seen. Robert, I assume you're listening. Of course. Obviously. I stuffed him into that cabinet. Oh, shit. Well, get him out and ask him how working with Eddie Rouse was. He's been in there this whole time, though. Ask him <laughs> what he thought about working with Eddie. Let's hear some more about how the pigs didn't go well. Uh-huh. Robert, I got I got some questions for you. Go ahead and give us a call at 763-634-1897. Yep. Sometimes I remember and sometimes I do not. I remember it when you say it. Yeah, you're like, oh yeah, that sounds completely right. I know it ends with a seven. Begins with a six. So now listen. Yeah. We moved Longstreet up to after Rada. 
Okay. So I don't even know what comes after this. Rada goes cuffs. So after Long Street, we do Smooth Talk and Lisa. Oh, okay. And then we go into... Nobody else knows. It's not announced on anything else. It's not announced at the end of the Smooth Talk episode. John Cazell. Oh, right. Because we need a shorty. Because we got something big planned for December, guys. Big time. We're not going to fucking talk about it. We'll never tell you. No. It's a secret. It is. It's it's going to be, December's going to be uh, pretty wild. Yep. You're going to open up that present. And it's uh, me and Jules popping out, telling you about our person. Mm-hmm. Screaming it. Ah! <laughs> but next week, Smooth Talk. Smooth Talk. And Lisa. Lisa. It's a real weird double feature. Mm-hmm. Jason of, picked it. Yeah, I did. I did. I was Surprise. So, I was so excited about it. Yeah, I was like, what? Yeah. This girl's from that TV show. Yeah. With dads. What? You have a, you're, you're. Yeah, you like her for some reason, <laughs> and then you pick this other one that's kind of like an artifact. Like mm-hmm. people, people like this thing, huh? Interesting. Yeah, they tie together nicely, though. So we'll see you next week with Smooth Talk and Lisa. Yeah, and then uh, oh, and then John Cazell after that. Yeah. So follow us on Instagram, yep. Reddit, Facebook, YouTube, YouTube. We do them filmographies. Emails, Gmails. emails. Uh, we do them filmographies at gmail dot com. Twitter, do Tw- filmographies. Tweet us at do filmographies. Check out other podcasts on the now, the now playing, playing network. network. And 763 1897. Give us a call. Mm-hmm. Leave us a voicemail. Mail us your wife's stockings, silk only. You don't want her filthy pants? <laughs> no. Me neither. Uh, okay. Hi, it's Jason. I'm Joe. Hey, do filmographies. 55 minutes. 55?